okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Ladies Power Launch. This is Free Gift Friday, but it's Free Gift Friday Takeover. Y'all, we've been doing things a little bit differently. We have been inviting our Free Gift Friday presenters to just go ahead and take over the whole feed. Just the feed is yours all day long. And so we found that people actually like that. And they've been really doing things that give us an opportunity to get to know them a little bit better. They've been doing things. Which one is my camera? Is it camera one, camera two? Camera two? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Three cameras. Oh my goodness. Sorry. They, they've been doing fun things like asking questions, doing polls, posting pictures of their kids or their pets, giving us an opportunity to see the woman behind the business, giving us a chance to get to know them better. And we love that because the fact of the matter is I know that when I started networking, it was the first time networking when I started here in this private practice. And let me tell you, I walked into the room and it was just so overwhelming to me. It's like I walked into the room and everybody stopped doing what they were doing. Everybody turned around to look at me. And me, the woman who never shies away from any kind of public speaking activity, I actually felt nervous. I, I felt uncomfortable. I felt like I didn't belong. I felt like I didn't fit in. And what I learned from that experience, because you know, you learn so much more from the things that don't go the way you plan. I learned how I want people to feel when they're part of my community. How I want people to feel is welcome. How I want people to feel is like the connections that they're making are actually heartfelt, authentic connections and not just, oh, yeah, I saw her on Ladies Power Launch, but oh, I know who that is. She has this adorable dog and she's told us her story about the things that she's been through. And I know who she is and I've met her. And you know what? If I'm going to choose somebody to work with, I'm going to choose her because she's the one that I know. So I invite you all to not only tune in and watch to see who's showing up for each of our Free Gift Friday takeovers, but I'm also inviting you to reach out if you're interested in taking over our Free Gift Friday, and we'll talk about what that looks like. So on with the show. Today, I have the wonderful, wonderful opportunity to one more time introduce to you Sorba Martinez. She is a woman who wears many hats. She is a best-selling author. She is a speaker. She is a therapist. She owns her own therapy practice where she manages a whole lot of therapists. She is also a coach for women in business. She's a coach for women who are starting their own therapy practice or who might have their own therapy practice. And she's also a coach for healthcare providers to help them to get their practice, to support them in a really, really robust way. And so she's done a lot of things. She's probably done it all. And I feel like when we're going to learn from somebody, it should be somebody who has had some experience. One of our very, very dear friends, Marianne Pack, loves to say, you know what, our mess is our message. The thing that we've been through, the thing that has been difficult for us over time, those are the things, that, those are the fires that we've been through that have taught us how we can better support the others who are around us. So today, we're going to learn a little bit more about Sarah Bell. We're going to learn about her broken heart, her religious trauma, her brain surgery. And we're going to learn about why being quote unquote selfish is really better than being selfless. You hear me talk about it all the time, that cliche of putting your mask on first, because if you don't do that, you can't serve the people that you're here to serve. You can't pour from an empty cup. I've tried it. If any of you figure out how to pour from an empty cup, I invite you to share that with me because I want to learn that magic trick. Sorry. I, I don't want to learn that one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Thank you so much. I'm good. <laughs> so happy you're here. I want to invite you to share with everybody about who you are and just the amazing things that you're doing in the world. 
Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back. We have been here for about three Fridays already talking about Unbreakable, my new book. Yes, it's here. And Unbreakable is here. And that is the project that I am working simultaneously with other projects. I can't tell you how many projects because you're probably going to go in circle. It's a lot, but I am very creative and I need to stay um, engaged in different things so I can stay motivated and connected to my purpose and my vision. Um, again, my name is Toribel Martinez. I am the author of Unbreakable. <clears throat> And I am so excited to be here. And today we are going to be <coughs> talking about um, uh, Unbreakable and some of the things inside the book that I think is, uh, are important for you to know and come back and get your copy so you can really, 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 really get into the stories and get the tools and strategies that I share with you. Because this is not just about reading stories, right? Inside of each story, there are tools, strategies. I give you um, the bounce from the dirty share um, process that I think that I'm going to um, trademark. I don't think so. I'm going to trademark that. <laughs> The bounce from the dirty share process. And I share all the processes in, in this book that will serve you well, not just in life, but in your career and in your business. Now, one of the things that um, I talk about in um, part three of the book is about choosing me. And a lot of times we were taught as women that you know, it's very selfish to take care of ourselves. That is selfish that to, to, to make sure that we give ourselves time. And that message has been ingrained in our blood and in our DNA that says that we should be taking, of, taking care of everybody else because when we don't take care of everybody else, then we are selfish and we're supposed to be selfless. Well, I don't want to learn necessarily how to be selfless. I want to make sure that you're choosing yourself every single time here is my here is my reasoning for that because the way that I look at it is your creator you then your partner and your children and then everybody else everything else right so if you choose to put somebody else before you that is if that is not in alignment because in order for you to support everybody else and those people to drink from your fountain and get from your energy and get from all that you're doing, you have to be deeply connected, fed, and taken care of. Why? Because there's no way, there's no way that there's going to be water available for anyone to get it when the faucet is empty. If the faucet is empty, there's no strategy, there's no science, there's no miracle that's gonna happen. Well, maybe miracles, but I'm telling you, you need to take care for yourself. You need to look out for yourself. You need to be fed. You need to be taken care of. You need to be nurtured. You need to be loved. You need to be supported because women, we have multiple roles in our, in our lives and that requires us to be well supported and well grounded. And the only way that we can keep in alignment our purpose, our vision and our mission is us taking care of ourselves. And that's the one thing that I talk about in the book, because I learned from the women before me that you're supposed to be selfless. And I saw many of the women around me really get tired, get depleted, get used and abused, misunderstood, not being appreciated, right? So that's not where we want to be in 2023. We want to make sure that instead of selfless, that we are being selfish. What does that mean? I'm not talking about selfish in the sense of you not caring for anyone. I'm talking about selfish in the sense that you must care for yourself. Like today, my body today needed a nap. So I finished doing something around 11.30. At 11.30, I decided that I was going to take a hour and a half nap. Because my body requires that energy, right? 
So now that I replenish my energy, now I can go back and do some other things or do nothing. It all depends what I think is going to support me today. So putting yourself first, it really helps you help others around you, support your family, support your business, your career, your friends, your family, your elderly parent, everyone that needs something from you needs to get it from you from a place of support and love. Now, here's one thing, how I like, I would like for you to make that choice is by you having a very strong self-care practice. And having a self-care practice also requires you to think about what is it that you desire deeply. Um, today, I did a live um, on Facebook um, called The Seven Steps to um, Fulfill Your Potential in 2023. And one of the things that I was talking about is that, that thing about desires you need to pay attention to your desires. No one that I know works for needs. And I always say this because if people will have worked for needs, then people who are homeless will not be homeless because they need it. They need housing. They need family. They need support. They need food. They need so many things. And that may not motivate them enough. But if a person can um, can connect with their deep desires of their heart, I find that women are better able to support everybody else around them. So have a very robust, amazing, complete self-care practice. And in the book, I provide you with a self-care practice um, plan. But by the way, if you attend uh, the Power Lunch Lady uh, summit, you will get a gift from me. You're going to get the plan. I'm going to gift you the plan because with that plan, you get to work on being prepared to continue to build your queendom, your queendom legacy, and leaving behind a um, a step-by-step -step process that can help the next generation get from where they are to where they want to be. So, Sarabelle, I love, 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 one, that you're going to be one of our keynote speakers at Summit. I love that you're going to be bringing gifts to give to our audience so that they can basically live their best unbreakable life. You know, what I have learned is that stories, stories really, really help us to anchor in these teachings that we need to basically implement into our own lives and a lot of us we've heard this message before we've heard that we need to really stop being selfless we've heard that we need to have a robust self-care activities we need to have robust self-care activities in our lives but can you tell us just share with us your experience I know you've been through a lot you've you've talked to us about your brain surgery you've talked to us about some things like your religious trauma you've talked to us about your even your broken heart can you share with us a little bit of the stories that helped you to get to this point where you realize that you know what I've got to take care of me I think that besides the um, brain surgery in overcoming brain surgery and two aneurysms I think that one of the one of the um, stories that really impacted my life um, was um, all the religious trauma that I suffer inside of the Pentecostal church. That was my experience. I'm not saying that that's everybody's experience. That was my experience. And one of the things that I lost uh, being inside of the religion and allowing them at a young age to reprogram my mindset and my beliefs about myself was that. I was not good enough, that I was not worth it, right? That the desires of my heart like were not important. I remember hearing messages around, you know, going to school and being educated is a sin. Um, you will go to hell if you go in and study psychology. Um, and when it was a constant message that it was being fed to me that was against or was not in alignment with my own beliefs and the beliefs that I learned from my 
my pap, my mom and my dad, where they always encourage us. Their expectation was that we were educated, that we would go to college, that we would do these things. But constantly hearing the church say how um, being educated was not of God, it, it, it really played a lot with my emotions. And I remember vividly the one time that I decided that I was no longer going to receive the message and that message no longer was supporting me was the day that I chose myself. I chose me and I decided to be selfish. And I say, well, I was very young. I was like 17. I was in college already. Uh, I don't think um, those, I think that God has forgiven me from those words, but I really was immature. And I remember that I said, well, I'm choosing me then. Then I'd rather go to hell educated than go to heaven stupid. <laughs> so <and laughs> that's exactly what I said. But in that moment, it was an attempt for me to choose me. It was an att me wanting to choose myself. It was me wanting to um, say and stand and reclaim my power and my voice that whatever I desired to be, whatever was in my heart was put there by God. Because when I was seven years old, I had already decided that I was going to go to school, that I was going to write books, that I was going to tell the big stories, that I was going to be able to change lives, that I was going to be a business owner. I have decided that when I was seven. So when this message is started to mess up with my mind, with my head, with my spirit, I had to make a decision to choose me. And I chose me. When I chose me, the first thing that I needed to do, which is why I tell people to um, have a self-care practice. And I'm not talking about doing your nails and our hair. Those things are important too, but I'm talking about the deep work. And part of my uh, process was to get help, to get a therapist, this counselor, to help me a mentor, to help me. At that age, I went and I found people to help me reprogram my beliefs and my ideas because I knew that they were deterring me from my purpose in life. Right. So when I'm talking about self-care practice, I'm not going, I'm not talking about just going to the spa, right? That's great. It's not about just going to the gym, right? It's also about doing the deep work, doing the self-development, doing the deepest thing, like changing and transforming and healing from the trauma. So I was traumatized and I needed to reconnect and I needed to go away from the people that were trying to literally, I felt that they, maybe the intentions were not that, but I felt like they were, they were taking away from me. They were, they were trying to destroy my life by destroying my purpose and my voice. So the, the first thing I did in that self-care practice was to get help and heal from the inside out. And that's the story. And one of the stories that I share in the book, and I give you some tips and strategies um, in there for you to really heal some of the traumas that you have experienced. For me, it was religious trauma. For you, you, it could be something else. But the strategies continue to be the same. Look within. Let's heal from within. Let's heal the things that have caused us pain. Let's not allow the trauma, the negative experiences and the messages that are being sent by society to us to be the voice, to be the voice, but rather let's reclaim our voice. So I love, love, love this. And thank you so much for always sharing so vulnerably about the things that you've been through because it's a lot and I mean I we're talking on the in the Facebook group you know as you are sharing with us and lots of people are saying that they can relate to these stories Dina is saying that she's heard this she's a therapist she's heard this many times from her clients uh, Marianne says I didn't choose me until my mid-40s and she's had a similar experience to what you're talking about. So it's not it's not something that is, and, and one of the things that I like to remind us is that we stay quiet in our discomfort without realizing that there's somebody who's sitting right beside us who might be yeah. going through something very similar. And it might not, like you're saying, it might not be a religious trauma episode, but it might be some other kinds of trauma that are mm -hmm. preventing us from taking ourselves seriously and giving ourselves the kind of self-care that we really need. So just share with us, because I love practical 
I love practical application. Share with us some do's and don'ts, some of the things that you think that we should be doing more of and some of the things that you know you sh we should be cutting out. Here is the thing. The first thing that we always have to make is the decision. Um, and the decision has to come from a place of self-evaluation and analysis. And in the book, I give you space. Each chapter, you're gonna get take, you are gonna have takeaways, and then you're gonna have self evaluation prompts. But I'm going to give you the opportunity to go deep into these issues, so you can heal from within. And making a decision is, I think, one of the most difficult difficulties that my clients have. The practical is easy. The practical is easy. It's like forgiving. Forgiving is not hard. The process of getting to forgive is difficult. It's a process. A process of um, choosing you is not difficult. The practical part is not difficult. The difficult part for women and people is to decide that they're gonna choose themselves. So making that decision that you're choosing you is important because if you don't make a decision, you're still making a decision and you're deciding not to do anything, you're deciding not to reclaim your power. That's point number one. No, point number two in the process of choosing you, find the support that you need. Let's get rid of this stigma that mental health is only for people who have mental health illnesses. There's many reasons why we should be seeing a therapist, a coach, a counselor, anybody, a mentor, somebody that can help you go navigate those issues. If you're dealing with trauma, you got to go to a therapist that is uh, licensed and has experience in these issues, right? So make a decision, go find the help. And the other step that I'm going to give you today is develop a self-care practice that holistic. In order to develop an unbreakable life and business, you need holistic, a holistic approach to self-care practice. It's not about the nails. It's not about the hair. It's not about only celebrating when we win, which is important, but it's not about that. How are you celebrating your body? Are you taking a nap? Are you taking that hot bath? Are you putting the music that you love? Are you pouring a glass of champagne while you're relaxing in the bathtub? Are you reading that book that you love? Are you having a massage? More than just the practices, it's like how you get deep into the practice, right? If you're having a massage, are you meditating while you're having the massage? Are you self-analyzing? Are you thinking about how you're gonna utilize that energy to get to the next level? So an unbreakable life requires an unbreakable um, approach to self-care. And you have to care, care for yourself all around. If you need to sleep, I sleep every night. You need to sleep every night. You need to rest. You need to take care of you. Read the books. Go to the to the conferences. Come to summit. Listen to the things that are going to reprogram your brain and your mind. That are going to create new neural pathways. That are going to create new beliefs and ideas and values that are going to support your journey. That is what I think you should be doing this week. I love that. So, Sorabelle, whenever we start talking, you know, we could be here all day. And it's always so amazing to me how fast the time goes by. Give us one last thing to remember. Maybe a little bit of homework that we can do over the week. And then we'll see you again next Friday. What do you have for us? I want that this, um, this home, the homework for this week is that you are going to take one moment this weekend and you're going to sit in solitude and you're going to put some meditation music and you're going to choose your favorite candle and you're going to either say pray or meditate whatever you believe in it doesn't really matter and for me when I'm going to do this kind of work I always say God show me the path I'm always willing to do my part put the people and the resources in my path I will always do what I'm supposed to do and then I get quiet and let's see what you listen to. What is your spirit telling you that you need to engage of more? What is your spirit your spirit telling you that you need more of? And based on what your needs and desires are, I will, I will say focus more on your desires than needs. Then practice one thing after that that will support you completely and fully. 
and completely and fully again. I love that you explain the steps of how we get into this meditation space. And I love that you invite us to go implement one thing afterwards, because that's, I think, one of the key pieces that had been missing, at least for me, for a whole long while, where I was meditating, 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 always, always keeping that as part of my self-care practice, but I wasn't implementing necessarily the ideas or the thoughts that were coming through. And the moment that I started doing that, that's when I felt like things really, really started shifting. And when I say shifting, I mean shifting in a big way for me. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. So Arbel, how can people connect with you if they want to, you know, just reach out and talk to you directly? What I wanted to offer you is my gift first. Sure. I have a gift for you. Um, you can go in. I'm going to go to the group right now and I'm going to share it in this um, um, uh, video. Uh, you get to look inside of the book Unbreakable. I'm giving to you the introduction and the uh, chapter number one. Um, and you can get that. Let me get it here. It's beautiful. It was designed by the most amazing Barbara. Of course. Barbara. It's gorgeous. You are going to love it. So um, go to that link that I share and um, click on it and request your the, the sneak peek and read it. And it's free. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks everybody for tuning in today for our Free Gift Friday Takeover. This has been really, really outstanding and it's been really a pleasure having the opportunity to chat with everybody who's shown up inside the Facebook group who has been following along. So that's awesome. Thank you so much, Sarabelle, for agreeing to be our special guest today. We'll see y'all on the next show. Bye everyone. Bye everyone.